sudden the plane just felt like it went like bloop up and fell back down y'all like <sighs> So they wasted no time with me for this reserve block. I just got back here last night, like around 5 p.m. And I had a reserve start from 3 a.m. this morning. They called me 3.45 for a three-day trip. So here we go. So second leg of the day. It's just two legs for the first day of my three-day trip. First we did JFK. Don't mind that. I just kind of drooled some water on myself. Um, first leg was... JFK to Boston that was like a quick 36 minute flight we only had like 57 passengers I love it now we're about to do Boston to MCO um, MCO is Orlando um, a little more about 130 people on this one it's about a two almost three hour flight so and then we'll be done for the day because um, I'm really kind of tired like Luckily, I went to bed at like 11.30 p.m. last night um, because they called me at 3.45. I was on call at 3. I was thinking maybe I would get to sleep until about 6 or 7. I knew they were going to use me just based on our list of people and where I fell in the order. But I didn't think it was going to be that early. So, And then tomorrow I get to go to... Um, Santa Domingo, Dominican Republic. I'm looking forward to that. I haven't had any international layovers, so that's going to be my first one. It's really short, and it's an awkward time because we get there like 1 a.m. and then we leave at um, 3 a.m. later, 3 p.m. later that day. So hopefully I can make a good use of the time that we have there. So see y'all in Orlando tonight. Hey guys. So knocked out those two legs. We did JFK to Boston, Boston to Orlando. Worked with one of my favorite captains. He's amazing. I love flying with him. Um, just got to the hotel. They had me smack dab in the middle of a mall. Temptation is real, but I'm going to be strong and not shop. So let me just give you all a quick room tour. I'm starving. I didn't get time to meal prep for this trip. Um, like I told y'all, I got in at 5... Well, really, my flight landed like three something, but the traffic and the rain was so bad yesterday in New York, it took the shuttle like an hour just to get back to where over there where I live. So once I got in, I just ordered some takeout and went to bed. So I am on a three-day trip without food, which is never good because that means I'm going to spend way too much money. But anyways, take a look at this room so I can go downstairs and eat. So this is the restroom restroom it's nice regular tub cute little mirror um, two double beds Some little chairs all my baggage and yeah that's it and a horrible view like this is disgusting. <laughs> like, who wants to look at that? Like, I'm just mad. Just shut the curtain. Hello, Orlando. Okay, the pool is okay. okay. See, that's why this it shouldn't be by this mall. We wouldn't have to be all yeah, blocked in. Prison pool. A prison pool? I mean, I don't know if, pools, if prisons have pools, but it's like a prison pool. Y'all say hi to Diane. Hi. Say hi to my subscribers. YouTube. Hello. When you got a cool crew, well, one cool crew. <laughs> cool side views are beautiful. Look at this sunset happening. Yes. Good morning, y'all. Getting out of bed is so hard, especially on the layover. Like, you don't really have to get up, but you know you got body goals to hit. It's five. 46 a.m. in Orlando. We leave at 10:27, and I literally had to force myself to get up and come to this gym. So, and I like to do it early because I want to go back, take a shower, and then take a nap before van time. <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised. Like this gym has 
quite a bit of equipment to be a hotel gym. Yes. Okay. It's gonna be a good one. So guys, good morning. Or yeah, it's 11.08 a.m. So yeah, y'all, I'm doing my emergency pre-flight procedures right now. Um, this is going to be, sorry, I'm not looking at the camera, y'all. Time is a distance here. This is my first time working an international flight as the F1. So there's a few things that we have to do different as far as paperwork and stuff like that. But but other than that, let's rock and roll. Headed to the Dominican Republic for a little short layover, but it's gonna be my first time ever going there, so I'm super excited. So I'm reading this destination specific procedures and I can be playing when we get to Mexico but it's a lot of work and I don't have any food y'all. I'm gonna die for six hours on this aircraft without food. This wasn't smart. Just another airport. So two legs done and we have one more to go. These international flights y'all get off the plane, go through customs, get back on the plane, do it again. And then the crazy thing is I have to lug all this stuff off and lug it all right back on to the same exact plane. Update, update. So we are supposed to start boarding in seven minutes, but our pilots have not landed yet from wherever they're coming from. So, we're going to be delayed. Yeah, exactly what I wanted. Sarcasm, y'all. Not what I wanted. But, it is what it is. Hopefully they fly fast tonight. It's, this flight is blocked for, I think. How many hours is this flight blocked for? <laughs> My vlog. up in the Dominican Republic this morning. We don't have that much time because it's not a long layover. It's 13 hours when we got here at 1 a.m. It's now 9.18 and our shuttle leaves at 2. So let's see what I can get into. But right now I'm having breakfast and maybe I'll find a little bit of fun. Pretty pool area. Outside bar but can't do any drinking. Yeah. He was just <laughs> What did he say? He said if you pay him some money, he will cook, clean, wash the dishes, and mop for you. <laughs> <laughs> this grocery store is nicer than most that I've been to in New York. Here's my Santa Domingo. It has like everything well, except for the one thing that I'm looking for which is a restaurant fresh seafood fresh <sighs> and I don't speak Spanish but I feel bad that I have to ignore people my room and then we walk in you have your restroom closet uniform nicely hung up a little wet bar area with safe and refrigerator and then the room Excuse the bed. I slept well last night, y'all. 
nice little sitting area, desk, TV. And then the best part is this window view. The view is great. I love it. So, as it turns out, I am too tired to really do anything. We just went and walked down to down the street to like the market and just stuff like that just to see, you know, the culture and the people and things like that. That was maybe about an hour, maybe. But that's all I have energy for. Yesterday exhausted me. We have one flight back to JFK tonight and it's probably gonna be a pretty full flight because our JFK SDQ Santa Domingo flights are always full. So I'm gonna need my energy for that. Oh, but I didn't even get to tell you all what happened yesterday on the flight because I was dead tired when we got here. Um, normal flight late tired last leg so and people were active and we were pretty full about 130 out of 150 um had like a baseball team of young kids and like 10 of their coaches that wouldn't sit down kept getting up and opening the overhead bins and swapping seats and sending seats that they didn't pay for blah 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 all you know just normal stuff and then in the middle of service did drinks everything's going good everybody's asking for extra this extra that going through with snacks and then all of a sudden smooth selling you know during our briefing you know pilots didn't mention anything about any turbulence bumpy nothing you know all of a sudden the plane just felt like it went like bloop up and fell back down y'all like first time experience so I don't even know if I would I guess it's still technically considered turbulence but it wasn't like shaky like usually with turbulence like you can start feeling it build up like you can start feeling like a shake and it gets shakier and shakier and shakier this no we were just smooth sailing and then it just went boop and boop just like right back down so <laughs> this lady grabbed my arm you know people are screaming well, not like crazy screaming, but a few people let out some screams. It was scary because, you know, just all of a sudden you're, you know, you're flying smoothly and then you just go bloop, bloop. So, I, of course, I stopped everything I was doing. Um, and, like, in my mind, I was kind of like waiting to see, like, if there was going to be like another bump. Um, and I was trying to decide like do I want to just take a seat here in like this cabin seat or do I want to make it to my jump seat to like get to the phone and It felt like it was like taking a minute and of course it's probably just a few seconds so I ended up making it to um, my jump seat um, Buckled up and then captain called just in time and he was just like, you know, sorry We didn't see that on the radar. He didn't really tell me what it was. So I'm just I'm either assuming it was like just like a crazy air pocket or maybe like another aircraft, which um, which would have made, you know, another aircraft was probably really close to us, which would have made our plane experience like some turbulence. and Like who knows? Like I, I didn't even ask them after the fact like what happened. But he just let us know that, you know, it was good. Nothing else was going to happen. So we got back up, you know, but... Um, we were all in the aisle at the time because we were doing service. F3, he was in the middle of the cabin. He sat down in the cabin seat. I'm not really sure where my F2 was. She was more towards the back, so she might have been in her jump seat in the back. But, y'all, I was really proud of myself because <laughs> the customers told me they were like, you made me feel so much better. You held your composure so well. You know, this one guy, he was like, I will fly on a plane with you any day. He was like, because, you know, you know what you're doing. You're trained. He was like, you stopped what you were doing. You made sure everybody was okay. You know, you, you got to your seat. And, but the whole time in my mind, y'all, I was just like, I was just praying. I was like, Jesus. Like, but it just happened so quickly. So, you know, and then like, there's different, like, of course there's, of course there's different levels of turbulence and things like that. But that like shake, it's kind of like hydro playing in your car, like where you just have no control that like, that's what it felt like. Like the aircraft literally just kind of went bloop bloop. 
So, like, we didn't really, like, I lost my balance a little bit. But, you know, sometimes when you have turbulence, you, like, kind of hit, you can, like, fly up and hit your head and things like that. So, nothing like that happened. And luckily, all the passengers, all the customers um, were in their seat at the time. So, they were all good. Were they all buckled in? Who knows? Because people don't listen. But, um, after that, <laughs> everybody pretty much stayed in their seat. And, you know, they were just really appreciative. And there was a few um, of the kids on that baseball team that had never flown before. So after the fact, after I was passing through the aisle, they asked me, they were like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. He's like, when I saw you sit down, I was so worried. I didn't know what was going to happen. So it's very important to, as much as you can, try to compose yourself in moments like that because you just never know and based upon how you react as the flight crew that's how your passengers and customers are going to react and you want to make sure that they feel as comfortable as possible so I'm glad that my face wasn't showing my real emotions which I really wasn't scared I was just more like trying to figure out what was the next thing to come but you just you don't know you know that's like that's an unplanned emergency that could have possibly happened you know like, it's just all kind of stuff anything can happen in the aircraft that's why if you fly often or fly at all if that seatbelt sign is on please keep your seatbelt on if we ask you to sit down just stay seated if we're in the aisle and you think you can be in the aisle too no because it's not safe all the time y'all so that's my first little experience with a little a little bump in the road, a little bump in the air, a bump in the skies, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But I think I handled it well. Um, we had some non-revs on the flight too. Um, one guy, he was pretty super senior. He was actually laying down when it happened. He was sleeping and he said he felt the bump and you know it, it jolted him up, it woke him up. And he said that was like the first time he's actually been scared because you know that it just really came out of nowhere like usually you're kind of prepared for turbulence sometimes that one came out of nowhere but he told me too he was like girl you, you held it together good you couldn't tell anything was going on so kudos to me kudos to me kudos to me um but anyways y'all i'm gonna take a little nap um our van time is at 2 17. it is 11:37, according to the Apple Watch. Um, so yeah, let me get some rest. Talk to y'all. Trip is officially over. Thank God, I'm dead tired. Ugh. Struggle is real. Just got back to New York, and it's 28 degrees outside. So I had to go get my big friendly jacket so I can catch the shuttle and go home. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I tried to give y'all a good, real inside look of flight attendant life and things that do happen. So if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you're subscribed, like, and share. I'm trying to tell y'all this, this weather is not my friend. It's so cold outside. My nose feels like it's about to have frostbite. I gotta go buy some of those burglar masks that they wear.